Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. On Lower Decks, Boimler has a girlfriend and she isn't a hologram. Mariner looks to uncover the mystery, or is she just jealous? Then, Tendi and Rutherford are pitted against each other in the battle to win a T-88. And sorry about your brand new floors, but we're totally going to implode your moon. And welcome back, everyone. This is another episode of Starfleet Underground. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are. I would say the crew is all here, but we're not all here today. We have Patrick and, and Rocky are still here. I'm going to let them introduce themselves as well. But we've sent Heather on an away mission, so her communication may come in and out. And I'll let her explain that because it looks like we get a stable connection right now. So go ahead, Heather. Hi, I'm Heather. I'm a science officer. Yep, I'm on an away mission and communication is a bit funky, but I swear to God, it has nothing to do with the fact we were drinking Romulan ale last night and all like messing around and having fun. And, oh, by the way, no guest for today because he's sort of in the bathroom um, throwing up. That Romulan nail is pretty bad, so he won't be able to join us today. All right. And hmm. just to cover yourself, a disclaimer, Heather did not provide the Romulan ale. It was brought by the guest. So I'm not going to be bringing up burn charges. Yeah, yeah. Let's go with that story. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't be an amateur <laughs> around Romulan ale. That's just a <laughs> typical safety, you know, right there. What the captain said. Mm. And that's the ticket and we have <laughs> over here our computer expert and ambassador and supplier golems patrick hello i'm number one i'm your computer guy i'm the also the ambassador and i guess i'm a golem supplier my precious so <laughs> you know good morning good afternoon good evening and salutations and of course the person that makes us go keeps the ship in top condition and even though he's the only one i don't know how he's able to do all this and still have buffer time is rocky ah there's nothing like the smell of a fresh plasma fire <laughs> that's what that was burning popcorn don't put, put that out damn it gosh <laughs> the triples again Let's set off a red alert that would not be good and and triple hair it smells a little bit like cinnamon coffee <laughs> <laughs> if you say so <laughs> And of course, my name is Nathan. I'm captain of this intrepid vessel as we explore the Delta Quadrant and catch communications from Earth. Also, looking at lower decks as we wait in eager anticipation for Starfleet Discovery to come back. Star Trek Discovery? Star Trek. Yeah, that's right. We're, we are we're Starfleet. Starfleet. What, what's the name this of the show? <laughs> this Star Trek Discovery. You did not There's have your people. coffee this morning, did you? No, not yet. I'm looking at it now. I'm going to drink it. He didn't call it Star Wars, so I guess that's something. Yeah, no. right. Oh, God. <laughs> and people gleefully calling it STD. So <laughs> there's that as well. Now, at least we're all here. And I'm glad your communication so far is stable. First off, do we have any corrections or anything? Not that I'm aware of. No emails have been processed. Oh, my God. Another perfect show. Woohoo! You know, that really makes me feel warm. Cool. Now, next is news. Any news for the week? Yes, we have um, some very good news for our LGBTQIA uh, listeners and fans. Star Trek Discovery Season 3 is introducing the first non-binary and transgender characters. Uh, we have Blue Del Barrio, who has been doing theater since she was seven and she was in the process of graduating from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts when she auditioned for the role of Adira, and this will be her, her television debut as a, a non-binary character. She also is herself non-binary. Then we have Ian Alexander, who plays Grey, who is the very first out transgender Asian American um, in a, a role on TV. Um, you might recognize he or him as they played Buck on the OA. Well, I have a, a question before we jump to the next person with news. Um, didn't we have a non-binary character before when it came to the binars and or the one that Riker had fell in love with? Well, I think this is more not not necessarily that the characters are non-binary. It's that the actors themselves are non-binary and transgender. And also so, playing the role of such, correct? Right, right. 
Okay. All right. Cool. Now that's good for that's good into the history because Star Trek has always been about inclusion. And so that makes me very happy to see that, especially now with attitudes changing more and more on Earth. So that's friggin' awesome. And do you have any news for us there, Rocky? Oh boy. You know what's coming up? Star Trek Day. This is actually September 8th, 1966 that tell us it officially debuted. So if you were alive in 1966 on September 8th and you were by a TV, you apparently got to see Star Trek like the first time ever. It's oh. like so cool. Um, yeah, so I, I did. So thanks for the old reminder. Oh, you're not that old. 66 <laughs> isn't that far ago. It's yeah, it's yeah, long it's, ago, but it's not yeah. that far ago. <laughs> it's uh, 55 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. But uh, that's awesome. And uh, they've uh, officially declared no, nobody's actually officially declared a national holiday uh, for some reason. So I don't what? know what's up with that. That's some some error or something. I, maybe it's too close to Labor Day. I don't know why. I demand a recount. Yeah. You figure, you know, you're going to take Friday off and then you're going to come back and you get your extra long three-day weekend, four-day weekend because you take an extra day. Well, you took the wrong one because it's Tuesday the day you're supposed to take it off and uh, and get it for uh, Star Trek Day. But go figure. Uh, StarTrek.com slash day is where you're going to go hang out online. Worldwide, you can watch the panels. So on our local Pacific time, whoever's local in Pacific from 12 to 3.30, they're going to have global panels live streamed. And uh, well, it's everything there goes, from... There goes bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch your bandwidth. You get your Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds panel. You get your Star Trek Enterprise panel. Star Trek Deep Space Nine panel. Original Series panel. Lower Decks, Voyager, Picard, and Next Generation. Uh, uh, Picard and Next Generation is the same panel. For some reason, they have similar cast members in those two shows. Hmm. Uh, Go figure. So, so, yeah. So, there's that going on. And then, if you're local in the U.S., you can actually take part and watch the uh, actual marathons, too. They're marathoning a bunch of episodes. So, that's cool. Do we know if the panels are going to be available after the fact so that those of us who are not available to watch them on the day i would hope they would be because i don't know either um I, and in fact i'm i'm another one of those suckers that took the wrong day so mm. uh yeah they better be if not somebody's gonna have to bootleg them right yeah <laughs> i will be very upset uh, let's see. Oh, the other thing, of course, uh, the geeks who drink are going to have a pub quiz at four on Twitch, also in part of Star Trek Day. So, oh, and new emojis will be coming out. You're going to have an emoji for Jordy LaForge, Michael Burnham, John Luke Picard, and more. Wow. So, if you like your emojis, you can get some uh, hot new uh, Star Trek emoji action. Ooh, hot. My mind just went all kinds of places. See, I did that before Heather could. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and one last little uh, cool thing. Of course, I don't know if you guys remember the Star Trek United Gives campaign mm -hmm. on Twitter where you do the hashtag and they give a buck. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. They're doing it again on Star Trek Day. So that's Yay. super cool. See, that's why I like Star Trek, man. It's like it's inclusive. It cares. You know, it, it tries to do good. That's I mean, come on. What else can you ask for? Mm, replicator. Yeah, replicator. Well, nice. yeah, transporter, or transporter would be nice. Yeah. Phaser, phaser. Yeah. <laughs> now let's check to see if our our line is still good. Terry, to Heather, are you there? Yep, I'm still here. Um, went in and out a couple times, but I'm here now. It's that wormhole. I'm warning you. I well, you know, it's just the price you pay if you want to go visit the worms in the wormhole. And you know, having tea and sitting here and talking about the meaning of life with the worms are just it's worth it. So, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> yeah, you don't get the Bajorans after us because you called the part the part <laughs> right in them. Is right. worms. Those are, their, uh, those are their gods, their deities. We don't want to call them worms. They're worms to me. They don't mind. No, that's true. They do appear on how you want them to appear. I have a question, though. Have you seen um, Captain Cisco around? Nope, have not seen him. Um, but we are keeping an eye out for him. He should be around here somewhere. But while we were sitting here waiting, I'm um, reading through the grapevine that the same people who are offering Star Trek wine from Picard, they have a new wine bottle. And oh, there, there goes the subspace. <laughs> that wormhole possible. just closed. <laughs> yeah, I think it's possible. Somebody wants to keep the new wines to themselves. <laughs> yeah. And maybe they, you know, the pirate in them heard that she called them worms. I'm here. <laughs> there she is. Uh, cool. She's sorry. Okay. okay. So clean on blood wine, $50 a bottle. If you're interested, check them out. Star Trek wines. Oh, blood so, wine. It's a blood mm, wine. Clean on blood go. wine for 50 bucks. 
Hey, I have another question. Since you're in, since you're over there on Deep Space Nine, um, do, have they erected a statue for Nog yet? Yes, they are building it now. Awesome. And they have it right in the center of Deep Space Nine, and everyone loves it. Awesome. Yeah. That is freaking cool. He deserves it. And so I should make a trip over there so I can have some blood wine and raise it to Nog. I, I think that would be awesome. That's a tribute. I'll go with you. Stay away from the double tables, though. Well, I mean, so, you know. Come on. Lita wants to say hi. Come on. Well, that's true. Yeah, and we could throw a few uh, platinum bars on the table. Oh, now I know also why, since we talked about it last episode, why Quark's Hello Sweets were always going down. Yeah. It's the filters. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those filters need a lot of more maintenance than your typical holodeck filter for some reason. <laughs> Quite often, it <laughs> seems like. Okay, I'm just about, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose my breakfast now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason okay. the filters get filled. This is true. Yeah. Now, before we get spotty communication again, Heather. Yes. Let us know what we saw. What's our assignment? Give us a recap. Yes, sir. Reporting for duty, sir. So this week we watched Star Trek Lower Deck Season 1, Episode 5, Cupid's Errant Arrow. It first aired on September 3rd, 2020. There was no teaser this time. This is the first episode with no teaser. Not even not, teasing. Not even a teaser. Yep. So we are going to start off with Act 1, The Perfect Girl. Friend. In storyline A, the Cerritos joins Vancouver to help them blow up a moon. During this mission, Brad is reunited with his actual real girlfriend and definitely not his old hologram <laughs> girlfriend. When Mariner and Brad go to meet up with her, Mariner is surprised to find out that she is a real human being and not only that, she is too good to be true. So something is definitely up and Mariner is sure Barbara is a fake. She won't let Barbara take Brad alive. No, not like her old friend, Angie, who is eaten by her boyfriend, a.k.a. a Harvogian shapeshifter. She'll protect Brad at all costs and find out who the girlfriend really is. In storyline B, Tendi and Rutherford are doing repairs and envy the Vancouver and all of their updated information. When they board the Vancouver to help out, they find out about a contest. Whoever finishes first will keep their fancy new T-88. And go. I like this one. I really, really kind of cool. At first, they start off with a typical Starfleet mission where they're all sitting around talking about the moon is going to impact the planet. And people at the table are echoing kind of what Earth does. It's not going to crash into the planet. Fake news. <laughs> Government <laughs> made it up. <laughs> Government made it up. It's not real. This is like, wow. So that was pretty funny. And they're all there and they get to try to find a way. And, and again, it shows the captain. Carol, <laughs> it shows her, her ability to try to be an ambassador while she's the second contact ship. But it was pretty cool. I, I liked it. You know, and I also thought it was funny when they meet the girlfriend and, and Mariner is like computer and program. Right. You never know. You can never be too sure. So just in case, just shout out computer in program. Just, just this in case. Episode, hey. Oh, no, computer, stop. No, don't even that program. <laughs> Keep that program going. Okay. Well, you know, you. ever since uh, Voyager and the Doctor, you can never be too sure. Right. Well, this episode had me no. hopped up like you on Picard Day for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's some serious homage. And my hat's off to the animators because they made his girlfriend look hot. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. It's like she can't be real. My hand's gonna go right through her. Is it gonna touch? Well, did you see? Did you see Beckett <laughs> with her with her big hair on when she was on the keto? I mean, she was all glam. That was. Funny. I love that. Oh my that god, that was awesome. That hair, that hair girl. That hair. <laughs> oh, I want to see that hair again. I hope she brings it back. Yeah, I, well, we need more flashbacks like that. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh God, the pet names in this episode. She called him Boy Boy. Boy Boy. <laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> That's funny. It was really cool. You know, the fact that she was like actually understanding and kind of loving and Mariner sound really protective. I mean, kind of a little bit on the jealous side, too. She really was looking out. For well, Barbara was like, she's like, don't she's like, I'm sure you feel that when you're around Brad. And she's like, I try not to feel anything around Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Be careful around Brad. You don't want to feel something by accident. <laughs> Brad word. <laughs> That's like it's almost like Squidward, man. <laughs> <laughs> like he's Bradward. He's Squidward. Bradward. That's a perfect name for oh, him. Oh, like a Bradward. Yes. And uh, oh, also the pet name. He called her Bun Bun. I was just the, the pet names and the, the cute little names for each other. Just like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, ultra cute. 
it also got me hungry because I wanted a Trip Tucker with sprinkles. With no, no, it, it was a, it was a it was a there. Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker sprinkles. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Kirk Sunday with Trip Tucker sprinkles. I'll, I'll keep oh it with my, my hot God. banana Sunday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me some chocolate sauce on there with some cherries, and we are we are good to go. Oh my God. <laughs> And uh, of course, the tech stuff, the nerds are like, oh, my God, I want a T-88 now. I don't even know what it does. I just want right? one. What is, I mean, what does it do? Because it's new. It's not a tricorder. It's, it's not a... scans or something. It, it's like it's a cool maintenance it device. It faster. Yeah, it's it's faster than the T-66, I would it imagine. It has some cool lights. T-88 make go faster. <laughs> yeah. And uh, whenever your D-53 is sparking up, you just whip out the T-88 and take care of it. B-52s, what? <laughs> and you know, T-88s, they take out uh, plasma fires, too. Uh, yeah, apparently it's it's something uh, some something good to you, you just you know don't set the whole ship on fire. Just are those like the old T I T I eighty calculators from the late twentieth century? Hey, that's what it. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out. I was like, is that what we're referencing? Are we referencing the old T I eighty eight? Could be. Or are we talking about the T eighty eight back home? We used to bullseye womp rats in and st- I, I was that the T or was that the right number? Oh, we'll do a bullseye what? Wrong uh, franchise. Okay. Womp rats. Womp rats, are you Yoda? Are you Yoda Yodoing us? <laughs> no. <laughs> are you Dagobah Dagobah systeming us? <laughs> Back in Dagobah, yeah. I love the also they bring a lot of Star Trek history. When they were talking of um news, did you know about the data lore? Yes. <laughs> right? That was some scuttlebutt, man. That. They had the they had the gossip going on. And they're on. like, did you know there's always something going on with that ship? Jesus. Drama. It's like, it's like TMZ and on, you know on the on the Cerritos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot going on on the Vancouver though. I mean, that was like those guys are real stressed out. I guess we'll get to that in a later bit of this. Uh, but right. uh, big fancy ship is the is the the first impressions of the ship was like, wow, that ship it's is like, cool. You do realize it's our same ship, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's no, all it's modular. <laughs> it's just all modular stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> You, one warp drive is as good as another. <laughs> mm. Did you guys notice the reference when Mariner said um, she's an alien that is going to eat you or a Romulan spy or a salt succubus or an android or a changeling or she's one of those sexy people romplers who mur- murder you for going on the grass. Did you guys oh, yeah. recognize all of those references? <laughs> They were yeah. quick and furious were references, but awesome. they were good. I wasn't, so, I wasn't sure about the romper one. What was that? Um, so the sexy people rompers uh, murdering on the grass, that's referring to the next generation, uh, the episode Justice, where aliens called yeah. Edo try to murder Wesley Crusher because he fell on their grass. Okay. Yeah, he like knocked over a bush or something and was like, okay, kill the kid. Uh, right. I remember that. That was the one they ran around with barely their clothes on. Don't yeah, Riker was stuff. really like in his element <laughs> on that planet. Yeah, he wouldn't <laughs> stop running. Well, did you know did you notice on the wall when she and she had all those pictures up of the you know references that you just made, Heather? But she also had Lursa was up there. Yep, the salt monster. Oh yeah, yeah the salt monster. And the salt vampire was from the original series and it was also known as the M one thirteen creature. Why why does it have to be a 13? Why can't it be a 15? Because um, some other creature in some other planet is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the android reference, that was from the original series, What Little Girls Are Made Of, when Nurse Chapel was in love with Dr. Roger Corby. Like, keep your half breeding interference to yourself. Uh, oh, yeah. They pack so much into this, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so many Easter eggs in this thing. Yeah, it was, it was like, it should have been Easter. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell the writers are really into Trek, or else how would they know to talk a little all that history? Yep. They even do the animated series. When Nord was in love with Carter Winston, the Vendorian shapeshifter, they brought that, that in there from the episode of The Survivor. Crazy. Mm-hmm. It was done really, really, I love the opening of it. It, it really doesn't feel like a half an hour no. show. No, no. Oh, so, this much stuff so packed. packed, so jam packed. It was yeah. like, it was like, I, how am I keeping up with all this stuff? It's so, I mean, you do have to watch it for its replay value and go, oh, that's what oh they did. And that's what they said. And like, I remember and that. And captions it's like, on. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, yeah. Got to rock the captions. Get the spelling right. I yeah. watch it three times and I still can't get all the notes I want. I still feel like, oh, I have to go back because I miss this and I miss that. There's just so much in there. Mm-hmm. And background scenery, this stuff that happens in the background that you got to kind of keep an eye on. On, which is pretty cool. Did you notice the chief engineer kind of looked like to me like Frasier Crane, the one who was, the one who was trying to sneak aboard the uh, Cerritos with Trehu, yeah. right? The one that was trying to that one that put the contest for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, I just saw a light go out. 
um, we lost our feed with Heather. Heather, the one more, Heather, like, Heather. Yeah, yeah, I thought oh. we lost our. Well, there you go. Feed with it, I saw the light. That wormhole just closed. It. Yeah, I wonder if she's messing with them again. Well, you know, um, what was funny was when, um, yeah, when Mariner comes in and they're they're talking about you know how she can't be human or whatever, and Boimler's like, you need to start pe- accepting people for who they are. He says, and now be quiet so I can change everything about me, <laughs> so I can trick her into thinking I'm something I'm not. I know that was funny. He's so paranoid. I guess he shows you his love life. He can't believe he's got a girl as hot as her. Well, I mean, look and at the so- competition. I was like, right? that well, dude was like, you know, he's pretty dang, like, I would be intimidated. Oh, dude, major yeah, competition. Big yeah. Shoulders. Oh, she's I'm back. back. I didn't see well, the like. Of back. course, you guys start talking about the sexy, like, you know, Jet. Of course, I'm going to, like, you know, come back and talk about him. <laughs> well, it's funny when, when Boimler goes to the replicator to, you know, to the cool people in history, and then he's like, boy size, small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time. Like, whoa, okay. Yeah, that's buddy. real sexy, man. Boy size, small. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Gets my juices going. <laughs> Did you notice he had a little bit from almost every friggin' boy nerd yes. movie? Yes. He had the boot from Back to the Future. Oh, man. From the hollow Fonzie. Boots. He had Fonzie. He had the jacket from Fonzie jacket on. It was like, what the hell? That was All some cosplay we're going to see at a convention oh, for sure. Oh, I can't sure. wait to see that cosplay. It's, That's some combo com- cosplay It says right it was there. an unholy style mashup of the Fonz, Tim Riggins, Will Smith, and a touch of Doc Brown. Nice. <laughs> That's right. The sunglasses. As, was as he was coming into the, into the, like, I guess it was their 10 forward. Um, he's like, I can be even thatter. <laughs> like thatter is a word. Uh, like I can be all that. And he orders uh, be a, a hot beer. I mean, a cold <laughs> beer. I was like, dude, nobody orders a hot <laughs> beer. It's just like, he didn't know what that, wait, is that the next section? Heather? Yeah, but it's okay. We could, uh, we could get to, shall we move to that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, real quick so though, true. Tendi yeah. had this one little moment where she can't possibly believe they're going to be working against for this TA-88 and they're like uh, you're going to get one if you do so good and she's like she slaps the dude she's like I'm sorry I just got to make sure it's yeah. not a dream she just oh. she slapped him I'm like what the and hell so slapping herself Tendi's uh, she's got a violent thing about her that's just uh, she's just like psh, no no um, no filter on her she just goes yeah, for it she has it. some aggression issues for sure I'm so shipping him and her as a couple oh They're big time eventually together. Yeah. very <laughs> very much so well I think you Mariner know, uh, really Mariner and, and Boimler are going to get together too really you think so I think they might actually at some <gasps> point but I don't think it's a permanent I think it's going to be one of those accidental things she, nobody talks yeah. about she is way too protective to be like just a friend well I don't know about that. I mean, you know. Mm, well, that's true. I mean, I, I'm that protective with my some of my friends. Yeah, you are. You you're protective of me at the con. That's because you're elderly. <laughs> oh. 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 oh, oh my god. <laughs> Dead. Okay. Somebody's okay. gonna get punished Ooh. later. Okay. Wait, a, we're gonna have wait to. a minute. Number one, aren't you the same age as the captain? No, I'm young. Actually, younger than he is. <laughs> yeah, he's young. He may look older, but he's he's younger than me. <laughs> you know, I don't look older than you. Come on now. So let's go ahead and go to the second section before Patrick gets his second win. <laughs> Hello. I think we lost her again. The light yep. went out. Oh no, she popped out again. That wormhole, man. Well, you know, you, when, I don't know, why does she want her to go to the wormhole? <laughs> Does anybody remember why? She likes worms? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the tea. She liked drinking tea with the worms. I have to look up the on the I orders. I mean, do, do does, she does, does tea in? worm give you, make you high or something? Or, you know, does it make you feel good? Of course. That's why she okay. would go. Wait, what? Well, maybe Are you guys talking about me? Problem. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. I came back. <laughs> so, what's our de- so what's our next section? Um, so as we go into Act Two, the investigation in Storyline A, both Mariner and Brad realize Barbara is too good for him. Mariner works on figuring out who she really is, and Brad works on trying to be someone that he is not, just so he could keep her. Every time Brad tries to impress Barbara, he fails miserably and ends up being jealous of Jet. What does Barbara see in him? Mariner is going to find out. At first, Mariner thinks that Barbara is an android, but she didn't react to the sound emitter. Then Mariner thinks that she's a reptoid, but no tail. Now, Mariner is sure she is a parasite and she must go save Brad. But when she enters the ship, she finds Brad totally naked. Oh, the horror! Storyline B, Rutherford and Tendi are having a great time in the Jeffrey tubes, racing each other to see who could finish first, which they both do. Now that they've won the contest, they can get their 
surprise, an immediate transfer to the Vancouver. Wait, what? <laughs> I thought that was funny. When she went to go check on her, she grabs and she pantses her. Like, oh my God, how embarrassing. Oh my man, purple. Yeah. Purple underwear. Yeah. Did you see that? Is that Starfleet regulation underwear? I, I think that was sexy girlfriend underwear. Uh, uh, okay. And you notice it wasn't a thong. No, it wasn't a thong. We can't do the thong bong song? No. Nope. So they do, I don't know if they say whether or not if thongs are in the future. <laughs> well, I think that'd be pretty <laughs> oh, sexy. Oh, they probably are. If you, you know. Yeah, they gotta be. Yeah, everybody wears them, you know? Yeah, but she held her temper pretty good for, for somebody who's been that annoying. And then Brad's like, I'm gonna go with my human girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you know she was still trying to be understanding so i thought that was still pretty pretty cool and let's talk about the argument that captain may have with the couple that was there oh boy about the moon like, that's some it's serious moon business. how many how many people are there in your in your world oh there's just the two of us what there's two fucking people on your fucking moon he's like yeah we're rich <laughs> She's like, blow it up. We just had it redone. Mm -hmm. Destroy it. <laughs> we just had it redone. We yeah, just had the floors just redone. The floor. Ah, you yeah, maniacs. That's, that's, if you've ever redone the floors, that's actually pretty serious because, you know, that's a big business right there doing the floor. <sighs> you know, I just thought like, it's like, wow. I know, right? It's like there's only two of them on the planet. Yeah. So Boimler is like Mr. Overcompensation, right? I mean, like he's really overdoing you mean it. You boing, boing? Boim boim. boim boim is over <laughs> boiming it. Boim 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 boim. You know, boim. Feel, feel bad for him because it's like, oh, this poor dude is just so insecure. It's like, you're trying too hard, man. Yeah, he's like, you've already got the good thing. Don't mess it up. He tries, but you know, when you're that nerdy, it's kind of hard not to be insecure. Yeah, plus self-sabotage and all. Going going mute for a second here. Section 31 showed up. I want to find out why. Uh -oh. Go ahead, continue amongst yourselves. I can still hear you. Okay, that tricorder that Mariner brought in to do the anti-android positronic noise, that was some sick dubstep she was playing on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone should have started dancing. Yeah, I was like... Drop the base, and here we go. <laughs> Wait, I'm back. Uh, I I have to turn around and and say this. Apparently, I didn't know they listened to our live feed here. This show was brought to you by Section Thirty One. You happy now? You can you can go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You didn't have to come all the way here to tell me personally. You could have sent me communication. Oh, wow. Okay. They, in person, huh? Yeah. I was like, wow. That's a, the yeah, side that's effects of having the omnipresent Section 31 as your sponsor. They kind of remind you if you forget to maybe say Maybe they're it. the ones messing with Heather's comms. Hey, maybe. Uh, it's possible. Maybe they're mad because they went to her room and she wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it was. You did? Gosh, you know, I thought they was going to do Carol. Shut up and let me think. You didn't leave the, you didn't leave the hollow of yourself? The hollow, Heather? Oh, I, f I knew I <laughs> forgot something. You know, when you leave the spaceship and you know you forget something. You just forgot to turn <laughs> forgot it on. To turn on the hollow, forgot Heather. to turn it on. <laughs> no, no wonder. <laughs> These wormhole worms are just telling me some uh, juicy gossip, and I don't think Section 31 is too happy about it. Oh, they're missing out on the gossip. Mm. Are they saying you're oh, sexy I and that's your tell? I'm so looking forward to that mission debrief then. <laughs> oh, man. Wait until you hear what they have to say about Leland. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he's still the Paw going. Wraith know about Leland, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, they yeah, know. They are the Paw Wraith. They're supposed to be all time. Yeah. They were even sitting here watching a PP tape, so it's pretty Whoa. funny. <laughs> I knew that there was one. Wow, that's 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 late 2020, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I knew there were one. I, I just knew it. <laughs> Leland has a PP tape. It's oh, true. God. <laughs> Did you get that from the Cardassians? You heard it here first. That's <laughs> well, the disturbing. Cardassians are the ones that gave it to the wormhole worms. Well, ah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. God. You guys, if you ever follow Gold Ducat on Twitter, <laughs> it is exactly the perfect. Who? Gold Ducat. Oh, okay. Uh, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. is basically exactly word for word what President Trump puts on Twitter, except it's changed for Cardassia. It's way too close to me. It's sometimes it's like, oh, is this too real? But it's a hell of a parody. You can figure who's follow who. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's oh, so like, it's, it's at real gold Ducat. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I've got to follow him. <laughs> I mean, if you're not going to follow the president, might as well follow Goldicott. Oh, my God. I, I'm looking at it right now. And there's a his pinned tweet is I will build a subspace graviton field and I will make Bajor pay for it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm uh, definitely gonna have to check that out on the wave. Oh, oh my man. god. I never called John Luke John Luke a loser and will swear on whatever or whoever that I never called our great Starfleet officers at Wharf 359 anything other than heroes. This is more made up and fake news given by disgusting and jealous failures in a disgraceful attempt to influence the election. <laughs> That's awesome. Picard was a hero because he wasn't assimilated. I like people who weren't assimilated. <laughs> oh my God. Let's, let's not go too far off track here. Yeah, we're, we're pretty far off right now. <laughs> let's get back on course here. Okay, Heather, where are we? We were on Act 2. Do you want to stay on Act 2 or go to Act 3? Well, I was just mentioning the cool dubstep she was playing on the tricorder. Um, <laughs> and then after I, that, of course, Boimler like blows her demo away. It's just like that she's having this really super cool demo in astrometrics and Barmler comes in and is like hey I'm Mr. Impressive and, and then knocks the whole planets out of whack and the whole thing goes crazy and then just jet rocks over there and hits the undo button and saves everything. I just want to see my girlfriend do her thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she was still understanding. I really I mean. The yeah she didn't completely moment. flip out on him. She yeah she yeah, no. I, I would have flipped out on him. I'm like what the hell's wrong with you and, and she's that's just because like. because she's under the influence. No. Uh, the boy boy. In the third act. That's all that well, yeah. That's, that's all the boy. Who's the boy she's, boy. She's, she likes the boy boy. Nobody he can resist boing boing when it goes boing boing yeah <laughs> so. okay and then yeah, of the course boing, boing, boing. The, the, the moment where uh, she does get a little upset she's got to go back to work and she's like I can walk myself come on Jack walk, walk me, walk me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> just like wow I was like okay so what, what are we saying here that was a slap in the face yeah it hurt yeah, yeah it was kind of fun but we used to date you remember years ago like a billion years ago a billion years ago talking about her and Jet we used to date like a year billions of years ago yeah so that must drive Boimler in friggin sane oh yeah completely he like he's, yeah. he's super jealous at that Mr. point Mr. Insecurity yeah yeah but look at Jet broad shouldered capable Capable, funny. It's like, yeah, we're going to take it downtown. Bla- a large black man. You know what that means? Yeah, that he's got large hands. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh-huh. You know, but we're going to take it downtown. What does downtown his, his, mean? His face are set on stun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> downtown. And, you know, in the in the uh, in the nether region. Are we are we talking down like like down low? No, we're not not on the down low. No, it's, oh. he's not on the down low. Oh, okay. That that's all. That's a whole other LGBTQIA thing. Oh, okay. But that's another thing that I like about the show. They're coming up with phrases and things that are obviously in the future that people know about, but we don't. It's just like if someone was to come here and go, you know, that is this that the cat's pajamas or twenty three skidoo. What, what what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? I, I, I lost you at Cat's Pajamas. What? You know, see, exactly. Those are phrases that were common back in the 20s and 30s that people would, would say. And just like now, it, it, people would say some things like, wow, she's got a WAP. You know, don't don't tell me what the word means, because even though we have an explicit rating, don't want to go there. You, you, she's got a wet ass Patrick. Yeah, OK, we can say that. <laughs> is, so, that is that what that means? You know, sometimes I got a red Twitter through. Through a, a, the universal translator. Did you not see the meme on Facebook with Patrick Starr? He's he's got big old fake boobies on, and he's got a um, for the braid in his hair is a big old uh, chain. He's on his knees, and it's a wet ass Patrick. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's that's phrases. So they obviously take it downtown means something there. It just as much if someone was to come up here and and say hashtag. Back in the day, there was no hashtag even like 30 years ago. It was a pound symbol. Right. You know, so things happen. People, there's different phrases, different slang. And I'm glad the show is in, indulging in it. So I think that's pretty friggin' cool. Okay, you know? so the, the competition with Rutherford and Tendy, they're oh. like... Rutherford even engages his like cyborg super mode and <laughs> make him faster. He, he's like even <laughs> faster. And, and she's actually, and she actually tied him. So Tendy's got skills. Mm-hmm. Even though for a medical person. Yeah. You know, I mean, a T88 is good for both medical or, or, you know, regular warp engineering. I mean, that's so cool, right? Everybody's got to have a T88. And the fact that she, even though she's medical, she's hanging out with him in engineering. That's really kind of cool. Yeah. You would figure it'd be the other way because her being Orion. And she has the ability to make him kind of fall for her, but it's actually kind of the other way. That's they true. They really they got that ability to uh, you know use them uh, them them skills. Yeah, catch a guy's intention. You know. Yeah, I'm sending you the WAP over subspace. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. Hi. Hey, did you see Cisco finally? Yes, I did. But unfortunately, he was sort of. Um, 
in between times and he couldn't really see me, but he looked like he was having fun from what I could see. I so just, he was out. He was out of phase in between times. He was in between times, but I don't think he realized I was watching him um, clean the pipes. Oh, you were cleaning his pipes. Oh, hell no. I wasn't cleaning his pipes. No, he was cleaning his own pipes. I was just washing. Oh, okay. That is an Ooh. image I don't want to have nice. in my mind. <laughs> When they talk about a small did you see the, the Cisco? Yeah. You saw I did, the Cisco, didn't it you? Was, it was, yes, I, you cannot miss it. You, miss, you, you saw the Cisco in its there, full glory. There was a lot oh. there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big hands. Oh. Big hands. Shall we move on to Act yes, 3? Yes, please. Yes, I need to get something to get the taste out of my mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Act well, 3, please. No, I'm not going to even look right now. So continue, please. Um, in storyline A, Barbara walks in on Mariner and a naked Brad. Chick fight. Barbara thought Mariner was a holodeck character, an infiltrator, and then a parasite. Mariner thought the same about Barbara. Barbara tells Mariner to scan her. Nope, definitely not a parasite. However, the tricorder does be positive when facing Brad. They find a parasite on Brad, and that is responsible for their love. So Barbara and Brad break up, but Mariner and Barbara are now friends. Storyline B, Tendi and Rutherford don't want to transfer. They want to remain on the Cerritos. Dawkins is angry about this and chases after them. After unlocking his pad, da, 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 Tendi finds out that he is trying to switch places with them. He wanted to transfer because he can't stand the pressure of being the best of the best. Ashamed, Dawkins cancels the transfer and Tendi and Rutherford are gladly go back to the Cerritos and they share a moment over a pile of stolen T-88s that are from the Vancouver. And they live happily ever after. And they all live happily ever after. (laughs) They all thought that, you know, that each other were a parasite. And the one person you would expect to have a parasite was was Boiler. Well, it it turns (laughs) out, I I think the parasite had an effect on both women. I think that's why Mariner was so obsessed. And uh, and, maybe. uh, Yeah, I think that's what was going on. I think it was like. That's a good point. She was in like defense mode, like really hardcore. Uh, And uh, yeah, so I I think the the parasite was affecting both of them. Well, you know what's funny is that when you, if you watch it without, these um, captions on you you don't really understand what the parasite is saying <laughs> yes, and, then you, <laughs> and then you as soon as you turn the captions on you, you, the parasite lover 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 when it was in this little like container it's like I'm gonna take you on a date yeah let me take you on a dinner I was like saying what something else that parasite probably gets its own show. I think. I think that's he needs a spinoff, <laughs> like the little um, tardigrade. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Like dot dot and effin. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> it was funny the way it was so sure of itself. The way he was sitting there screaming, it was like you know, ah, with his little hands. It was kind of cute but well, annoying at the same the, time. The, the, just, the real just winner, like Brad. Yeah, the real winner of the whole show though is of course the parasite because he gets the girl at the end, right? <laughs> She's like, I'm going to go study this. Oh, yeah, really? I didn't think about that. The parasite gets the girl at the end. And he's like, well, you're still going to go out with me. And you see, like, she's like, well, (laughs) I got work to do. But isn't that the way in every movie where the parasite always gets the girl in the end? That's true. That's a good point. (laughs) And I was like, oh, well, it was just definitely, I felt like really kind of sorry for uh, the guy who looked like uh, Dr. Frazier Crane. He's like, I don't want to be on this ship. It's so stressful. You got to be perfect all the time. So, Lieutenant Commander Ron Docent. Oh, is that how you say oh, his name? Ron, Ron Emanuel Docent. Jr. Oh, okay. oh, I forgot the middle name. I yeah. totally butchered his name. Which yeah. I, thought was a, I thought was a nod to Ron Emanuel. Oh, the, interesting. The, the Chicago uh, mayor oh, from okay. the 20th century. 21st century. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. That was just my thought, but you know, I could be wrong. Did you notice what his password was? (laughs) His password was Riker. (laughs) <laughs> like, fanboy. Yeah, you want to you want to get that that first officer Riker experience in life. You end up on a ship that's giving it to you, and it's too much. You can't handle it. He's like, I I just want to go back to the simpler times. I think a lot of us can relate to that. And yeah. you know, he must have tried to transfer like legitly because now he's like resorted to trying to um, manipulate yeah. people <laughs> and tricks and poor Yeah, yeah. They they didn't want they didn't want to lose him, so or he was in trouble.
trouble. They wanted him to stay there. Mm-hmm. And you notice that, um, well, what is the, the, cause I'm getting the names. So what is the cyborg's name? Rutherford. 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 Okay. You notice that Rutherford has his, when he touched his implant and they saw the <laughs> light go on, I knew he was recording, but can you imagine <laughs> you like, you have your cyborg boyfriend and girlfriend and your guys are getting freaky. And all of a sudden you see him touch his head. He goes, you better not be fucking recording this. What? Oh. <laughs> don't, don't record this. He'll be like, that. if what? It's for later. That's the, yeah. <laughs> it's for personal viewing for later. That's yeah. how those it's, POV videos get made. Yeah. <laughs> it's for private time. This is my Kim K video. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's like serious. Who knows? I can make you famous like Ken Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> This is my Paris Hilton moment. Leave me alone. <laughs> God. You know, oh, God. It's like, wow. It was It was definitely, and then at the end, to show how much Rutherford and... Tendi. Tendi, thank you. Rutherford and Tendi were so much alike. But it's like, I got a present for you. It opens up a duffel bag full of tea <laughs> and pies. And he's like, what's so funny? I did too. Yeah, and they stole all the T-88s. It's like, oh, we are such friends. Like, I, mm. Yeah, they're, they're criminals together. It's a beautiful, beautiful relationship. They're perfect Starfleet for each other. Starfleet officers stealing from another ship. Hmm. <laughs> they didn't steal, there's per gotta, there's, se. there's gotta be a violation there I mean, somewhere, it's Starfleet. Man. It's just creative transfer. Technically, mm. it's the prize for being finished first. So. There you go. They were both first, so they both win. But they yep. were only supposed to get one. And they did a whole lot of work <laughs> in record time. <laughs> I, I just wonder what all those T-88s are going to do on the Cerritos. Are they, is it going to be useful or is it going to just like, they're just going to like move them, like, like sell them like hot T-88s. I got a T-88. Want to hook up? I got right you. Right on the black market. Yeah. yeah. If it was uh, Mariner, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe she finds out about it and then she sells it. On the next episode, you see them all like have this, you know, gold necklaces, gold rings, <laughs> it's like, oh, those T-88s are great. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, meet me in 10 forward at 0200 and I'll, we'll, we'll get you hooked up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got the pin pack going. (laughs) It's going to be a black market on those things. (laughs) Well, after Picard, I mean, no, he made it fashionable. No, is it T88s or T85s? 88s. The 85, I think, was the the calculator. Although I think they had an 88 too. Okay. But no, the ones that the the duffel bag, they were the T88s and the duffel bag. Yeah, Yeah, they they were the 88s. Yeah. Oh, okay. The D53 was the thing that kept acting up on the Cerritos that cars the stuff to smoke. So they have to, you know, Know, use the T88 on the D53 to take care of that. Why don't they just get some WD-40? That's what I think, you know? Well, that would, that's, WD-40 is flammable, so if you spray that into some hot plasma, it's going to be really, really messy. Mm, Yeah. So that's the next thing I expect for someone to bring on Naked and Afraid. It's like, (laughs) what did you get? I got this combination machete and stabbing knife. What did you bring? I brought (laughs) (laughs) WD-40. Bring some duct tape, too, as you said, yeah. No, a guy did bring duct tape once. Oh, okay. No, really? There was a guy who brought a whole big spool of duct tape and the partner made fun of them until they realized that they could make hammock shoes bikini <laughs> they made all this stuff out of the duct tape yeah but if you make a bikini out of that it's gonna be really painful to come off no, they, they and you're gonna, be a, you're gonna be a ball <laughs> you, eagle double, when it does. you double tape it on both sides so it's, yeah. it's extra strong on both well, sides that's why you manscape right <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how you manscape. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you manscape. You gotta manscaped. pull that shit off fast. It's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah. Real men do it with the <laughs> tape. Oh, wow. I'm just saying, that's how Klingons do it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they're always yelling kapla. I think the Suliban have been using duct tape for centuries. Oh dear. (laughs) (laughs) That would explain some things. It Mm. definitely would. You know. Well, this was a fun episode, man. Oh man. And this show shows again. It's a lot of a lot of promise i'm enjoying it i know we had haters out there but we're always gonna have haters whenever the star trek's coming on if they brought back the original series with the original special effects and everything else they would say why didn't you update it mm-hmm. there would be people that says how come we get this technology and it still looks old you know so unfortunately we're gonna have it but i'm really enjoying lower decks in fact i've seen people across my feed have gone out and bought the uniforms oh and speaking of my lower decks coffee mug that I bought. It broke. broke it. It broke this morning. Oh. Oh. 
Aww. How did it break? And I was reaching for it, and it, it slipped off the counter in, in into the sink and, and cracked. Aw. That sucks. Dang. Yeah. Duct tape. Duct tape. Yeah, duct tape will work. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was. It has some sharp edges. That's limited edition. So. Yeah, first off, I want to know why you got a lower decks coffee mug and didn't tell me that it was available to purchase nor send me a link what the hell has gotten into you you even got the t-shirt and didn't warn me where it was or how to get it you look good in the t-shirt by the way it was a nice shirt thank you star trek.com hello no (laughs) but you still didn't tell me you used to tell me these things but ever since you got the promotion and you've been on this ship you just been all about you it's just like the last away mission where we're under fire and then you get shot and what's the first thing you did i'm hurt i'm bleeding take me back to sick bay me 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 (laughs) You didn't wonder that I had to do the mission on my own. But no, you're just so selfish. You didn't think it's like, oh, Captain is going to have to do the mission by himself. No, it's just me, me, me. This may disfigure me. Oh, Next next time some shape-shifting alien wants to lay eggs in your face, I will just, I won't do anything about it. I didn't say that. (laughs) I'll just let them have you then. Thank you very much. This was it. Excellent. Should anybody has any final points? We're going to kind of end early because um, oh, I still have to debrief Heather. There's, Go ahead. Oh, goodness. There's so much you could talk about in this episode. They've got it so packed in the stuff. We didn't say half the stuff that happened. Oh. I mean, how about all the crazy stuff that Boimler did? He shook like a hand with an egg sack. And, yeah. and, oh, uh, my God. And, that and, was man, funny. It's just all those funny little things as he did. The, the stuff that the girls bonded over. I mean, of course, the girls gossip, and that's exactly what they do. They gossip, and they, they learn of all your little faults and make fun of you secretly when you're not paying attention and he's like wait what did you guys talk about he, she's like oh nothing girl stuff yeah girl stuff it's like we're gonna take it downtown yeah i'll see you next week and we're gonna take it downtown i was like are they gonna are they gonna get um all, are they gonna get all you know lesbian on us are they gonna go downtown <laughs> what's what's going on here Ooh, what's going on? maybe getting downtown mm-hmm. shut up you shut up that's actually no. in the extras did you see the extras <laughs> they actually show that in the extras what they, they, they show him going downtown in the extras. You didn't see that? No. Wow. That's some pretty You're hot lying. extras. You're lying. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, oh, lying. God. <laughs> no, this is, everybody got all You quiet. had Heather Googling like really quickly I right there. I was checking the computers. <laughs> Fortunately, she's uh, so over way in subspace. So her computer wasn't working very quickly. So she didn't get to see anything. <laughs> well, joke you know, her going. <laughs> it's not easy to search the uh, the telecoms when you're in the wormhole. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Especially no. they probably censored LGBTQ stuff anyway. Ooh, and um, Heather, hmm? I enjoy the fact that you're having a good time in the wormhole, but you did not have to send me a picture of Cisco doing that. that but I, you didn't believe no. me. No, you, you and did he not. was right in front of me, so you know I just no, pulled out the pad no. and took a pic and sent it to you. The Cisco, no, and unfortunately, when it opened up on my console, that was the only thing that popped up until I shrunk the picture. It, it uh, so used both screens on his console. He had a dual so screen you, console. You, you, you the popped up thing. as the pic popped up. <laughs> no, I didn't know what it was at first. It's like, why is she sending me a type boring and earth? Or the serpent and then I had to, <laughs> to shrink it. It's like, oh my god, it's in a forest. And then they shrunk it more. It's like, oh Heather, why? <laughs> well, I mean, why? at least you know how I feel when, like, you know, some of the crewmen send me, you know, pics and everything of their Cisco. Yeah, their <laughs> pics. Well, Which- you know, there are some things that once you see, you just cannot unsee, no matter how much you try. And just a little trivia for you, this ship used to have almost a good 20 to 40 people on it. And they were all male. But every time one of them sent Heather a picture, I had him transferred. <laughs> so now you know why we're down to the amount that we have. <laughs> and you just don't know how many of those transfers here. ended in a transporter accident. <laughs> yeah, we will talk about that. Or, or there was that one with the, the triples in the airlock that, that I still don't understand how they work the airlock. <laughs> <laughs> They've gotten pretty good. If they get opposable thumbs, we're going to have to <laughs> leave the ship to them. It just get yeah. another ship. I think our tribbles have evolved a little bit. I haven't heard them all all broadcast, so I think you know they must be sleeping today. That's a good that point. Might be a good thing. I wonder if we could train them to take up positions that we used to have other crew members for. <laughs> like, yes, like you hear ready phasers, fire phasers. <laughs> 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 and they're able to. I wonder. Yeah. Can you speak triple? I can't speak triple. I can. 
I got the universal translator working. What do you want me to sell them? I just wanted to make sure that we can, because I know Fred was working on that. Yep. And, and we had Edward. So I'm glad to see his work is continuing. Yeah. Yeah. We finally got it. So if you ever want to talk to the Tribbles, I think we're the only ship in the uh, galaxy that can talk to <laughs> the Tribbles. The conversation, though, is so deep. <laughs> um, yeah. Let me, you wouldn't let me think see it. Here. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to talk to one of them here, but every time I ask him a question, he, he answers me back with the question. Uh, I say, do you want to learn how to work on the ship? And it says food. And it says, how would you like to be stationed in engineering? It said food. food. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go back to Heather's room? Is it food? Food. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it has a one track mind. So we're going to have to see about that. Either that or it thinks Heather's food. Oh, well, that <laughs> explains it nibbling on my toes at night. <laughs> And I told you to cut them things shorter. They look like claws. <laughs> but they help me when I run away from enemies. You know, I can grip. <laughs> she, they, they're um, looking, they're looking like the, species 8472, Heather. Oh, my God. It, it might be the case, but when you walk down the corridor, it sounds like you get the taps on your shoes. <laughs> and you're barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> Tap dancing without shoes. Seriously. Oh, boy. It was like we're in the galley and it sounded like the <gasps> the raptor was opening well, up the door in, in Jurassic Park. You had to click, 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 click. You click, know, click, I've been... <laughs> I've been practicing for our talent show in the galley. I wanted to give you guys a tap dancing show with my toenails, but You're you know, do putting on the Ritz, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that is a taco we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have next week's episode? Um, or there was none? Unfortunately, it's the same as last week. The uh, episode name is not out as of yet. What? Or, it must be working as, with Section 31. I think it's the wormhole. It's just time is so messed up here. <laughs> that mm. little teaser, though, I just love how they're just, they're just humming warp core engine sounds. It's just so nerdy. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is... <laughs> It's like, oh, it's yeah. It's like, <laughs> and then, and then the first officer looks around the corner and is like, what the hell's going on here? We're, we're being possessed. <laughs> you would think that because, like, why would people sit there and do that? It just doesn't make any sense. Not at all. This has been a great episode. And thank you, everybody who comes in and join us here. Um, after this point in time, with so many episodes we have, you're no longer just our listeners, you've become family. So thank you for always joining us each and every week for your loyal and dedicated people. We're working on something special for you guys. Um, right now, it's just in the weird ether. We haven't solidified it yet. But when we do, you're going to be the first to know. I think um, I have a little spoiler news. No, please. I don't know if we've, if we've talked about this before or not, but I just I just looked on IMDb and Lower Decks has already got a season two listed. Oh, oh, yeah, Ooh, that's even better. 12, 12 episodes for season two. Sweet. You know what? They'll be out quicker than anyone else because they're an animated show and they get that lead time and animation right. is like not affected by the pandemic because you everyone can just yeah. like do it. So it's yeah. it's like so perfect and for that. Everyone can do the voices in their own poems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, question: Does anybody get any show love before we wrap anything up? Any podcasts you guys found or listened to lately? I guess that silence means no. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had no correspondence. There's been no comments. And so this is going to be towards the end of our show. Um, Heather? Yes, sir? Please do not send me any more pictures of Cisco unless it's from the show. Aww. Only I, official pictures. I got some good angles. <laughs> no, you can keep those angles. And and Rocky, um, the commendation I put it for you has come in. So we're going to have an award ceremony for you later on Ooh. down over in 10 forward. So oh. all the fine work you've done on the ship. Oh, well, and no, it's, it's nothing. Patrick, uh, yes. you there, Patrick, your discount card came in for the golems. Um they had it surrounded and it's animated and everything. It looks really cool. Did, so did my I'm AARP you card show up too? No, but the, <laughs> the discount, apparently the <laughs> discount card is good at quarks and all kinds of different places. So you're going to be our liaison for When am I going to go into, when am I gonna, going to DS9 though? I mean, well, what good is that? Maybe you can switch with Heather. Just make it back before the next show. I hate you, I was. No, don't buy any chihuahuas. We got enough tribbles. We don't need chihuahuas also. Oh, God. No chihuahuas, like, please. I have enough to do on this ship. I'm, there's no way I can take a vacation. Well, then just go for, all right, maybe a day. I can. I think we can lose you for You're a day. You're so generous. 
Of course I am. As long as you're not going to be selfish and talk about, I'm hurt and I'm bleeding. Just take the day <laughs> on the end of a three-day weekend. You'll totally get On a bonus. Tuesday, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that would be the perfect day to do it. On Star Trek Day. That would definitely work. So for all of you joining us, thank you once again for listening. Please be safe out there. And remember, just don't have a great week. Make it so. Starfleet Underground, beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.